Hey everybody, it's Friday. Time for coffee with Rob. Hope everybody is doing well. Uh, hope everybody's over their election um, excitement and blues. I've seen both. Um, I just pray that God is glorified no matter what it is. Uh, yes, we voted, um, but I don't bring politics into biblical teaching. So I hope everybody prayed their, voted their heart, and I pray that we have the best leadership possible always as we go into the future. Um, so I pray we always remain one country under God. That would be great because then we have good leadership and God's protection, God's provision, and God's wisdom when we're under God. So anyway, I hope everybody's good. Um, we got an interview tomorrow with Sam from Pakistan. We'll be doing that and that will be posted next week. We also have another, uh, another video to be released tonight from Grandma's Kitchen where we made grandmother's strawberry parfait pie. So Casey's putting the final touches on that. And I've seen a little bit of her editing humor, so I hope you're prepared for that. It's fun. She does a great job. Very, very, very fun. So we're in uh, Mark tonight, on Friday night. Mark chapter uh, 14, verse 12. We're in the last week of Jesus' life. And uh, he is about to go into the upper room. Um, with his disciples. Uh, this is the night where he would be betrayed. This is Thursday on Jesus' final week of life before the Passover. Of course, the Passover was established in Exodus 12 with Moses. It's a celebration of the time during the Exodus while they were in captivity in Egypt where the uh, spirit of death passed over each person that had the blood on their door and they stayed inside. They stayed inside their huts, their buildings, put the blood of, of the lamb over their door and then they were protected and preserved from the shadow or the spirit of death that went through Egypt and killed everybody's firstborn. So, um, yeah, if you want to receive eternal life, if you want the death to pass over you, that's the second death, your spiritual death. You can read that in Revelation. You must be covered by the blood. Must be covered by the blood. So, um, basically, it says that when the spirit saw the blood, it passed over. And so that's the way it is with each one of us, if we are covered by the blood of Christ, when the spirit of the second death comes and judges or sees those that are not written in the Lamb's Book of Life, all that, uh, when it sees the blood, it will pass over you. You will be preserved and go into eternity with Jesus Christ because you are covered by his blood. You can read Hebrews 7, 8, 9, and 10 on that if you want to and understand a little bit more. And I'd I'm going to do that eventually. Um, so here we are. This is lesson number 49 in the book of Mark. We're beginning tonight at Mark 14, verse 12. Again, the last week of Jesus' life. Thursday morning is where we begin here at the evening. You'll see the, the change of time here in this chapter. We go from morning to evening. We go from the preparation to the uh, arrival in the evening to the upper room when Jesus begins the final supper with his uh, disciples, and that is covered in John 13 through 17, if you want to get a closer view of that. So let's look at this. Mark 14, verse 12, on the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, when it was customary to sacrifice the Passover lamb, Jesus' disciples asked him, where do you want us to go and make preparations for you to eat the Passover? They're going to celebrate the Passover. Jesus has since he was a child. He had gone to uh, Jerusalem many times with his family, with Mary and Joseph uh, at one point, and you can look that up. He was lost in the city for five days. They didn't find They were in a caravan back and forth. And so uh, they realized they were on their way out, and they're like, where's Jesus? And they had left him in the city. That's kind of a neat thing to look at. Um, they actually lost Jesus in the city of Jerusalem. And I thought, man, I would panic if that was my kid and I lost him in a city. Uh, and uh, we would be running back to find out who that was, where they were anyway make sure they were safe. So this is Thursday uh, and Jesus, by the way, has made, he has pre-planned these events that are about to occur. He's made preparations in the upper room. He also like he made preparations to get the cult before he made his triumphal entry into the city. So he is always going before his disciples. He's always going before us. Uh, and he has gone to prepare a place for us in his kingdom, and we will be together with him forever. So here's another preparation. He has pre-planned this event. He gets the, the, the disciples get the privilege of, uh, of being a part of this, and we do too. Being a part of his kingdom, his work, the church, winning souls in the name of Christ. That's a privilege to work in our Lord's industry. So 
uh, they, they want to know where the Passover is going to be prepared. Where do you want us to go? Where do you want us? To... So he tells the disciples in Mark chapter 14, 13. So he sent two of his type disciples. This is uh, James and John. Let me think it's Peter and John. Peter and John. I think Luke says Peter and John. He So he sends two of his disciples, Peter and John, um, go into the city. And a man, this is interesting, this would be unusual, by the way, a woman would normally be doing this job, carrying this water, but a man uh, carrying a jar of water will meet you. Uh, that's interesting, because it's daytime even, so um, most commonly it was the women's uh, uh, job to go get water. They would go in either early, early in the morning or late in the evening when it was cooler, get the water and bring it back to the home. Here in this case is a man carrying the water, so Jesus says that. This would be unusual, and this is why this man would stick out. He's carrying some water. So go into the city, and a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him, and say to the owner of the house he enters, the teacher asks, where is my guest room, where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? So Jesus has prepared us. He has talked to both these men. He has made this preparation. There's a man carrying water, and there's a man who owns the home that is, is uh, going to be the, the location uh, where they go to the upper room and have the final supper, the last supper, or do communion. So, so in verse 14, after you meet the man, follow him to a home and go see the owner of the house that he enters. And just say this to him, the teacher asks, where is my guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? So this guy knows this is coming. Jesus knows this is his final hour, by the way, that's a very important thing. If you ever see final hour or the hour when this is a very specific strategic time very important time when you see the hour has come this is a this is an event that's very significant so this is the hour when jesus is beginning his final night alive before he goes to the cross he'll be arrested tried crucified and he's going to eat this last meal as we would if you're traveling and you're going somewhere specifically like i i always relate to the military that's my life my whole family's in the military Literally, if you're going somewhere, if you're going to be deployed, one of the things that's very common is what would you like to eat before you go? And usually your family takes you out or you get around with your most intimate family, your most intimate friends. You have a maybe a celebration or just a mealtime. You want to spend your final hours before being shipped out or wherever you go with your most, uh, most intimate friends. Common, not always, but certainly it's very common. So this is the same thing. Where maybe eat the Passover with my disciples? In verse 15, verse 15, Jesus says, He will show you a large upper room, furnished and ready. So this is either divine knowledge or Jesus has made the preparation and sends the, uh, Peter and John to uh, take care of business here. He will show you a large upper room, furnished and ready. Make preparations for us there. I like this. Jesus has pre-planned and they prepare. He's pre-planned and they're preparing. So, uh, they're going to prepare the meal for Jesus. So the disciples left. They went into the city and they found, shockingly, things just as Jesus had told them. So what did they do? They prepared. He pre-planned. They prepared. Uh, it's just one of the things I use to remember that. So they prepared the Passover. Peter and uh, John prepared the Passover. So they get things ready. It takes some time. Jesus is teaching. He's spending time with his followers. And notice this, so verse 12 says, the first day of the past. This is morning. And then we get down here to verse 17, and it says, when evening came. When evening came, then everything's ready. Peter and uh, John had prepared this. And uh, they go to the upper room. They go to the house. Jesus knows exactly where to go. And when evening came, Jesus arrived with the 12. While they were reclining, so this skips over a whole bunch here. If you want to get the in intimate portion of this, Read John chapter 13 through 17, his final hour, his final discussion, and some great teaching in those verses where he establishes communion. He uh, tells, you know, he's going to prepare a place for us. He prays for those, not only for his disciples, but for us currently, not just these men, but those who will believe in the future and things like that. A lot of stuff to read in 13 through 17 of John, and that will be the next book we do. So, while they were reclining at the table, he said, I tell you the truth. One of you will betray me. One who is eating with me. Psalm 41, uh, 9, which was a violation of culture. If you sit down with the person, you break bread with them, and you eat with them, you're showing that we are at peace, we are at friends, I mean no harm to you. Then Judas is about to violate this from Psalm 41, 9. 
violate this completely, which makes him all the more vile. He's violating a custom where he's acting out this peaceful act, this friendship act, and he's going to leave and betray Jesus anyway. So he was kind of a wicked dude, stealing money, betraying Christ, taking a bribe, all these things. Uh, and then eventually, of course, he hangs himself. We can get into that another time. So one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. And they were saddened. One by one, they said to him, surely not. I'm not, I'm not going to do this, am I? I think in Matthew, I could be wrong. It might be Luke, but uh, Judas even asked specifically, is it going to be me, Lord? I mean, like he's just playing a game. He knows it's him. So they were saddened, and one by one they said to him, Surely not I. And Jesus responds in verse 20, It is one of the twelve, he replied, one who dips bread into the bowl with me, uh, the son, and, and it's one of them who dips uh, in his hand in the bowl with me. So they were all dipping, uh, so he didn't really dime Judas out. It's quite possible, if you look at John in the account of the upper room, when Peter asked, who is it that's going to betray him? Peter carried a knife. And it's quite possible that had Jesus pointed it specifically at Judas at the time, Peter may have gotten up and killed Judas. He was a pretty, pretty violent guy. He cuts the ear of Malchus off, uh, a Malchus's ear off when Jesus is arrested. So Peter might have killed Judas before he left the room. So who knows? Speculation, just a theory, just possibility. Uh, and Jesus just says here in uh, Mark 14, 20, it's one of the 12, he replied, one who dips bread into the bowl with me. Verse 21, the son of man will go just as it is written about him. So there it is. He's going to fulfill prophecy. Psalm 41, 9 is one example. Um, uh, the son of man will go just as it is written about him, but woe to that man who betrays the son of man. Uh, it would be better for him if he had never been born. So Judas is going to serve, the betrayer is going to receive a greater judgment. You can read about this in the in the final portions of the Bible about how some people will have degrees of punishment in eternity for betraying Christ. So that's just something, or denying Christ, or all those things. A greater darkness, a greater punishment. Pastors have a greater degree of accountability. Uh, and I said that about people on YouTube. Be careful who you're, number, both things. If you're following people on YouTube, be careful what they're teaching you. And YouTube teachers, be careful what you're teaching. I've seen people, again, getting millions of views, teaching horrible doctrine, horrible, horrible things. Uh, I mean, I could get into it. I don't know if I ever will. Maybe I will evaluate some. But certainly, there are disagreements in the Bible based on, you know, the way we read and interpret things. But all of them point to Christ. None of it is major. There's nothing major in the Bible that people disagree on. But some of the teachings on YouTube are straight heresy that's not good. So be careful what you're watching on YouTube. So, the Son of Man will go just as it is written about him, but what of the man who betrays the Son of Man? It would be better for him if he had not been born. And while they were eating, this was the institution of, of um, a communion. Uh, while they were eating, Jesus took the bread, gave thanks, and broke it. This represents his body. His body is going to be broken for us. And he gave it to his disciples saying, take this and eat. This is my body. So, they, uh, they take the, this is not transubstantiation, this is not the things that the Catholics believe that the priest actually becomes the body of Christ, or, or Christ, and the, and the elements become the actual body and blood of Christ. This is not any doctrine in the Bible whatsoever. That would be more tradition. Certainly, I don't believe it's true whatsoever that the, the elements that we take within the church are actually becoming the literal body and blood of Jesus Christ. They're representations of the body and blood of Jesus Christ. Just remember that. Take this and eat my body. This is the bread representing my body. Then he took the cup. He gave thanks and offered it to them, and they all drank from it. So they're all identifying. We take communion. We are actually identifying as believers that we believe and we identify and, uh, in the actual crucifixion and sacrifice of Jesus. We are 100% on board. We, want, you know, we're gonna, we believe this. It's our heart. It's who we are. When we take communion, we're doing that. We're participating symbolically in the, the, the uh, remembrance and crucifixion of God's body and the shedding of his blood. When, then he took the cup, gave thanks, and offered it to them, and they all drank from it. Verse 24, this is my blood of the covenant. Exodus 24, -ish, uh, 3 through 8, you can read that. This is my blood of the covenant which is poured out for many. That's interesting, many. It's for anybody who will, but many. It doesn't say 
all because not everybody's going to believe it. So uh, many, it's poured out for all, but not all will believe that. So you can read Matthew 7 on that. He said this to them, I tell you the truth, I will not drink again of the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it anew in the kingdom of God. And then they sang a hymn and they went out to the Mount of Olives. I will stop there because I really like to do a deep discussion on the Mount of Olives and some things there. But just as we watch this, this is the final night of Jesus' life. This is Thursday. It starts in verse uh, 12. This is Thursday morning. By the time of the evening, in, in Mark 14 here, they're in the upper room. It's evening, Thursday evening. When they finish this meal, uh, they're going to sing a hymn. They're going to go to the Mount of Olives, and then Jesus Christ will be betrayed. and will be arrested. He will be crucified. He will be tried all Thursday night, and he'll be hung on a cross uh, Friday. So that's the lesson for today. I think that's all I have here. Um, just remember, the key here is being covered by the blood of Christ. Remember, the Passover represents the passing over of death. When, when the Hebrew children were released from captivity in Egypt and all the firstborn died because they were not covered by the blood. But if they were covered by the blood, they were not affected. And this would refer to the future as the second death. If you want to be passed over, because we're going to die twice, we're going to die physically. And if we are not in Christ, we will die spiritually. And you can read that in Revelation. But if you are covered by the blood of Christ, you will only experience one death. That's a physical death. You will lay your body down, but your spirit is going to live on because you're covered by the blood. So when Jesus, or excuse me, when God brings his judgment upon all mankind, that same spirit that will bring judgment will pass over those who are covered by the blood. So the question today, you have to ask yourself, am I sure? And Paul even said that, evaluate yourself examine yourself are you covered by the blood because that spirit one day will be released and if you are not covered by the blood he will not pass over you he will destroy you and that will be your second death the spiritual death where we go to even heather and hell if you're covered you go to heaven if you are not covered you will go to hell you'll be just experience the second death so make sure you're covered by the blood today and i pray everybody has a great weekend Thanks for joining us for lesson, I guess it was 49, lesson 49 in the Book of Mark, and we'll pick up, I'll have a happy Veterans Day weekend, thank you all, for anybody that served, thank you for your service, it was a privilege, I love serving, it was a great, I love the guys I served with, the women I served with, it was a great team, a great opportunity to serve my country, to serve together with some great men and women all across the land here, and I'm very proud to serve with each one of them, to have served with each one of them, so uh, have a happy Veterans Day. Thank you for your service and have a great weekend. We'll see you all probably Monday or Tuesday, but definitely next week.